Hello, my name is Marissa Whitmer, and I am proud to call myself a National Academy of Future Physicians Scholar. I was fortunate enough to attend the February 2014 Congress of Future Medical Leaders, and it has truly changed my life. Attending the Congress broadened my perspective of the field and motivated me more than anything that I've experienced so far related to pursuing a career in medicine. There are many speakers there, and I can honestly say that I learned something from every one of them. I was amazed by the state-of-the-art science and biomedical technology, and I learned a lot about myself and how to pursue my dreams in a healthy and effective way. Jack Andraka, Andre Shushko, Shri Bose, Aisha and Raina Jane, Brittany Wenger, and Janelle Tam were so motivational because they were so relatable and they showed me that anyone can accomplish great things if they have the right amount of determination. I was also challenged by them to not limit myself because of my age, and they inspired me to proactively go after my goals and to seek out and take advantage of any opportunity that I have to gain more knowledge of the field. Because of their inspiration, I have been actively seeking opportunities to broaden my horizons. Submitting a proposal to this scholarship challenge is one of those opportunities that I've obviously stepped up to take. In preparation for this challenge, I have also interviewed a local surgeon, Dr. Joy Long, an oncologist, Dr. Shanti Savendran, who was referred to me by a breast cancer survivor, Mrs. Jan Fry Jones. I have learned so much from talking with each of them, and each of them encouraged me to pursue my idea for this challenge. However, it was specifically the work of Brittany Wenger, Dr. Mario Kopecki, and Jack Andraka that has inspired my idea for this scholarship challenge. Brittany Wenger created an app to help diagnose breast cancer that I think is very innovative. I could relate to her because I have an interest in finding alternative methods to treating this cancer since I have seen the horrible side effects of chemotherapy and radiation. Dr. Mario Kopecki's work with extracting DNA from cells is a technique that I see as valid for creating an alternative method to treating cancer. In addition, Dr. Kopecki's life story was so moving that it forced me to think that anything is possible. Jackie Andraka, who was also very relatable, shared the importance of using proteins to identify cancer cells in the pancreas. Combining these three innovative ideas, I have explored various ways to identify and treat breast cancer without medication. So in the words of Brendan Burchard, another motivational speaker at the Congress, nothing in setting a goal demands most of you. A challenge, on the other hand, is something that stretches your efforts and abilities. So here we go. According to breastcancer.org statistics, in 2013, an estimated 232,000 340 new cases of invasive breast cancer were expected to be diagnosed in women in the United States in addition to 64,640 new cases of non-invasive breast cancer. For women in the U.S., breast cancer death rates are higher than those for any other cancer with the exception of lung cancer. Generally, after lumpectomy, chemotherapy and radiation are prescribed for breast cancer patients. The typical side effects of chemotherapy are sore throat, sore mouth, diarrhea, and hair loss. Radiation causes skin redness and sensitivity, blisters, mild fatigue, sore throat, persistent cough, and increased risk for lymphedema of the arm and breast. While chemotherapy and radiation can both be effective treatments, patients may struggle with these side effects and this might not be necessary. Chemotherapy and radiation can actually cause a second cancer diagnosis in some patients. According to the American Cancer Society, alkylating agents, a type of chemotherapy drug, has been shown to increase the risk of acute myelogenous leukemia when used to treat certain cancers like Hodgkin's disease, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, ovarian lung, and breast cancer. Because of these facts, I have been motivated to find an alternative treatment for breast cancer that does not produce the side effects of chemotherapy and radiation. Therefore, my research question is, how can I create an effective treatment for breast cancer that does not have the negative side effects of chemotherapy and radiation? I propose to use a small gold nanoparticle that is attracted to a protein present on the surface of cancerous cells called nucleoli. It will be able to attach to that cell, 
penetrate the nucleus, and extract the DNA from the cell, which will stop the cancerous cell from multiplying. The nanoparticle is attracted to nucleolein, a protein that is overexpressed and found on the surface of cancer cells by the presence of a single-stranded DNA aptamer, which is called AS1411. The nanoparticle will continue to extract genetic material from any cancerous cell remaining in the general breast area. These devices will be implanted in the breast tissue after a lumpectomy procedure. Based on existing research concerning the extraction of DNA, I have designed a nanoparticle consisting of three legs, a needle, and a suction chamber that will anchor onto a cell, and the needle will be inserted into the nucleus and extract the cancerous DNA. Here is a proposed design of the nanoparticle. The nanoparticle will attach to the cancer cell that contains nucleolein. The three legs of the nanoparticle will embrace the cell and the needle will penetrate the cell membrane. Once the needle has connected with the nucleus, with a plunger-like action, the legs will contract to pull the cell towards the suction cup and extract the DNA. Using built-up pressure inside the nanoparticle, the suction will draw the DNA into the holding chamber, pictured here, of the nanoparticle. The DNA will be withdrawn into the chamber and stored there until surgery to remove the nanoparticle from the breast tissue. The cell that has had the DNA removed from its nucleus will stop receiving instructions for metabolic processes to be conducted in the cell and the cell will eventually die. What makes this different from any other treatment using any kind of nanotechnology is that this treatment is done without the use of drugs. Based on existing technology, it is estimated that the devices can store several thousand strands of DNA. Essentially, once the DNA is removed from cells, they will not be able to multiply. The nanoparticles will be used to eradicate any remaining cancerous cells in the breast after a lumpectomy procedure. Since this method is drug-free, patients will not have the negative side effects of chemotherapy and radiation. This method also effectively targets individual cancer cells, so it only affects cells in need of treatment. In this way, no healthy cells are destroyed, in contrast to chemotherapy and radiation that kill both cancerous cells and non-cancerous cells. New technology is being developed at Northwestern University, and they are using tiny particles of gold called nanostars to administer drugs to treat a variety of different cancers. The nanostar research supports my proposed idea. However, instead of disseminating drugs into the system, the proposed nanoparticles will extract DNA. Therefore, the patient will not experience the harsh side effects of drugs. The most common breast cancer is infiltrating or invasive ductal carcinoma. Since the nanoparticles are designed to be attracted to nucleoline, they should be able to treat a variety of types of different cancer from infiltrating ductal carcinoma to tubular carcinoma and prevent any further metastasis. Breast cancer patients suffer from many side effects of chemotherapy and radiation after a lumpectomy. My proposed nanoparticle would be an alternative method to treating breast cancer without the harsh side effects of medication. I have proposed an alternative method to treat breast cancer by combining information that I learned from Brittany Wenger, Dr. Mario Capecchi, and Jack Andraka at the 2014 Congress of Future Medical Leaders. I was inspired by the intersection of biotechnology and cancer research. Therefore, I propose a gold nanoparticle to extract the DNA from the nucleus of a cancerous cell. When I have access to a lab, I will be able to actually test my design and my research question more completely. As it is now, the existing research on cancer and nanoparticles supports the theory of this conceptual proposal. I have truly appreciated the opportunity to participate in this scholarship challenge, and it has helped me to be part of something bigger than myself. My present career goals are to become a surgeon and to truly be part of changing the quality of life for patients.